Gina. In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to make this crystal station bracelet. Now today, we're going to make a matching ring to go with it. And it's a very simple, very fast moving project. And you should be able to do it regardless if you want to make the bracelet to match or not. It's just a really cute little ring. Let me get in close so you can see it. This is what it looks like. It has a little bit of a um, lift to the profile to it. It's really cute and that's what we're going to make today. So let's go ahead and look and see what it takes to make this project and get started. Okay, for this tutorial today, we're going to use one bead from the Golden Harvest Treasure Bag. This is the six millimeter round pentagon faceted or English cut crystal that you will find a strand of in your treasure bag. You can use anything you'd like that's around six millimeter round. So you could use a pearl, you could use a regular round crystal, it doesn't matter. Just something similar in shape and size. Then we're going to be adding to the treasure bag some seed beads. So I have an 11-0, an 8 and a 15 I'm using in my 8 galvanized permanent finish Toho, and this is aluminum. And then I'm using the um, antique bronze in 11 and 15 And as I said, they're all three Toho seed beads. I'm going to be using some six pound fire line, and then I'm going to be using a size 12, or you can probably get away with a size 10 beading needle. And I'm going to put on a full wingspan just because this is a very thready stitch. So we may use that much, we may not. Wingspan is when you spread your arms out to your sides like you, their wings and you're going to fly away. You measure from your fingertips of the first arm, the length of that first arm across your chest, the length of the second arm, and to your fingertips on that arm. That's a wingspan. Put that on your needle and let's get started. Okay, to start this project, you're going to pick up two 8 seed beads onto your needle. Then you're going to bring them down to the end of your thread. You don't have to leave a long tail, but you need to leave enough to tie a knot with. Then you're going to go up through the first bead on the tail side. Hold on to that bead and hold on to your tail and pull these beads down until they line up on top of each other, just like this. Then you're going to sew through the bead next to the one you're coming out of. So your tail and your working thread are here. We're going to sew into this bead right here. And I'm going to hold on to both of them. I'm going to give a little tug. I'm going to tug on my tail while I'm holding on to it to tighten everything up. And then I'm going to tie a little knot here. So I'm going to take my tail and I'm going to cross my working thread over it. Then I'm going to go in through the loop with my tail twice, tying a tiny surgeon's knot here and just bring this down to the beads. Tighten it so that everything is tight and looks good, just like this. Now you're going to sew into one of the beads, just like this. Now you're going to pick up two more 8 seed beads. You're coming out of this bead here, you're going to go into the one next to it. Just straight down into it and pull your bead. Pull your thread, I mean, not your bead. Just leave your bead alone. And cross over, you're coming out of the bottom now, cross over. On this side, you're going to go up through both of these beads on this side. And pull your thread through, give a little tug, and again, pick up two more 8 seed beads. Go through one bead on this side. So you're going to cross over and you're going to go to the bead next to the one you are coming out of and pull your thread through. Now we're going to cross over into the bead next to the one we're coming out of. So we're coming out of the bottom of this one. We're going to cross over and go into the bottom of the one next to it. And then we're going to go through the bead on top of that one also and hold on to your beads and pull your thread through. Now this tail is going to get in my way, but I'm just going to move it. And this is what you have. Let's do one more set by picking up two 
80 seed beads, cross over, go into the bead next to the bead you're coming out of, and exit it, just like this. And pull your thread down. Untwist your beads. <laughs> they like to twist. And then cross over and go into the bead from the bottom up next to the one you're coming out of. And then also go through the bead on top of that bead, just like this. Now we've established some herringbone stitch here. We're going to make the center of our ring and then um, we will work around the back for the band. So we're going to pick up four 11 seed beads onto our needle. And then we're going to pick up two 8 o's, and then four more 11 o seed beads on the needle. So this is what you have, just like this. Now we are going to cross over and we're going to go into the bead on this side here. So basically, instead of just having two beads on top, you're going to put the series of beads, go through the bead next to the one that you started in, just like you've been doing, and then you're going to cross over, and you're going to come up through the bead here. This is hard to hold on to, sorry guys. And then we're going to go up through all four 11 O's, and the 8 on this side, just like this. And we're going to pull our thread through. <clears throat> now we're going to pick up two 8 seed beads, and we're going to go into the bead next to the one we're coming out of, and all four of the 11 O's. So we're going to go into this one, we're going to go through all four of these 11 O's and we're going to go down into this one here to secure this entire setup here. Now we're going to cross over and we're going to go through all of the beads on this side, including the two 8 O's on top. So through the four, you're going through an 8 O, four 11 O's and two 8 O's on this side and pull through. Now you're going to pick up two 8 seed beads and you're going to cross over and go into the bead next to the one you're coming out of. And then cross over into the bead next to the one you're coming out of on the bottom of that bead. Sorry, let me pick this up. <laughs> I'm having a hard time hanging on to this little thing and we're going to go up through these two beads on this side, just like this, and pull. And we're going to make one more set. So we're going to pick up two 8 seed beads, we're going to cross over and go into the bead next to the one we're coming out of. Then we're going to cross over into the bead next to the one we're coming out of now and go up through the bottom of it and go up through the bead on top of that bead, just like this. And that is what you should have. Now we are going to put our embellishment on the top for the middle of our ring here. So what we are going to do as we're coming out of this column of beads here, we're going to cross over and go through all four of the 8 O's on this side. And then exit that 8 O and pull your thread through. You're going to pick up a 15 O seed bead and your crystal and a 15 O seed bead. Like this. Now, we're coming out of this bead here. I'm going to get just a tad closer just to make sure. We're coming out of this 8 seed bead here. We are going to cross over in a diagonal and go into the 8 seed bead on this side over here. And go through all four of these 8 seed beads. 
and pull this down, make sure there's no slack, and then I'm going to just turn my piece a little bit. I'm going to cut down my tail just a little just to get it out of the way. And then I'm going to go through all four of these eightos on this side and exit the fourth eight-o right here, just like this. And I'm going to pull my thread through. Then I'm going to pick up a 15-o seed bead and I'm going to go through my crystal again, just like this. Hold on to your crystal and pull that 15-o down into place. Arrange your crystal a little bit pick up a 15-0 and now we're going to go in a diagonal again so we're attaching from this side we're going to go into this 80 seed bead here so we're going to go through all four on this side and pull it down and now kind of spread out your little um, seed beads on the bottom here and position your crystal so it's nice and neat on the top and then turn your piece over and we're going to begin doing some herringbone so we can get length to attach to this side and make a band so we're going to pick up two 80 seed beads and we're going to go into the bead next to the one we're coming out of so we're coming out here we're going into this one and we're going to pull this down then we're going to cross over and go into the bead right next to the one we're coming out of through the bottom. We go through the bottom of this bead and we go through the bead on top of it, just like that. Pull your thread through, tighten it, and again. So we're just going to continue doing herring one stitch until we get the length that we want and I'll show you how to measure that. But first, let's go ahead and do one more stitch cross over into the bead next to the one you're coming out of, cross over again, go into the bottom of the previous bead and the bead on top of it. Sure. Mm-hmm. There we go. Okay, so we're going to continue doing this until we can wrap it around our finger and bring the other side right up next to this side. So we're going to continue this length and then you can measure it on your finger or you can measure it on a ring mandrel. You put it on the size that you want and just measure it until it comes right up next to this side here. And we'll be back when we get to that length. Continue making herringbone and we'll be back. Okay, so now I have made my length, and the way I'm doing mine is I've decided I want to make a size 8 ring. So I'm just putting it on the 8 here, and I'm wrapping it all the way around. And you can see there's a slight bit of excess, and that's what I want because these beads take a little bit of room up on your finger, so you want to make that to accommodate for that. So now I have the length I want. And it's going to be a different amount of units for everybody. So you need a way to measure it to know. So you can use the ring mandrel or you can just put it around your finger and have it come up to where it meets, just like I showed you on the ring mandrel. And then let's go ahead and join these together. So we're coming out of this bead here. We're going to bring this up. Position it so that you know exactly what bead is going to be in line with the bead that you're attaching to. So we're going to go straight down into this bead here. And just go through it and bring your thread up through like this. I've got my tail and stuff there. That's okay because I will get rid of that in a minute. Now I have these two pulled up together. I'm going to cross over, go down into this one, and up through this one right here. I'm holding on to it. Yes, I know my finger's in the way, but I want to make sure that I get a nice clean pass and tension on it, so I'm doing it that way. Now I'm going to cross over next to the bead I'm coming out of. I'm going to go back into 
two beads now. So I'm crossing over next to the one I'm coming out of and then I'm going to just go ahead and go through actually it'll be three beads the one you're going into and then the one across from it and the one above that one so I'm just going into the herringbone on this side two beads deep and then I'm going to cross over two beads deep right next to the one I'm coming out of go down and I'm going to go into the bead here. I think I'll go into two. So here you can see there's four beads on my needle. Pull it together. And now it's nice and tight. I'm going to sew over, I think I'll sew over one more time, go through all these beads, cross over again, and go through several beads on this side. And then in the middle here, between the beads, there's a thread bridge. Now you can try to do it from the inside, but it's kind of difficult on a ring and I don't want to pull my beads apart. So there's a little thread bridge between these beads. Let me get you in extremely close so you can see. There's a thread bridge right here. I'm going to go under it. I'm going to create a loop with my thread and I'm going to go through that loop and then I'm going to pull a little knot down my tail more the thread coming out of my needle is a little long let me adjust that have pulled a knot down on here and now I'm just going to go back into a few beads go down a few Then I'm going to cross over, come back down a few, just so that I don't distort it too badly. And then I'm going to go on the thread bridge again and tie a knot. Now you have to straighten everything out because as you do this, sew through it and not, you kind of distort your stitch a little bit. So you just have to kind of work with it. Now I'm going to go through a few more beads again. So I'm coming out here, just going to go through a few more beads. You can tie it as many times as you want, sew through it as many times as you want to get it nice and neat. And then just cut off your thread. So. If I can find a pair of scissors that actually work, we will find out. Get close. Yeah, these ones don't. <laughs> Should have known. Okay, so now I've cut off my thread. I have a little tag here. Let me back off a little. That's obnoxiously close. And then I'm just going to melt that in. And then my tail here from when I started my project needs to be melted into. Now I'm going to put this on and see if it fits. And it does. And there is my little ring. Now doing this in all different colors would be really cute. You could even do on your band, you could do two different colors of Eidos and just kind of do a checkerboard all the way around. You could do something more prominent in color. I have a bunch of these beads if you want to get this particular type of bead in all different colors. It, you can use whatever color scheming you like. This is just the color scheming I used for my um, bracelet so I thought I'd make a ring that matched but you can make it in any color scheming you like it turns out really cute looks really nice on and that my dear friends is a little ring tutorial for you I hope you enjoyed it if you did please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell give me a little like if you want to and we'll see you in the next video bye bye